everyone and good morning. This is Rachel live from Calkind Studios and you're watching the opening bell. As inflation worries weigh on the markets, let us cast an eye over how market chart is panning out today. The ASX 200 is struggling for direction following a weak session on Wall Street as market participants await the upcoming key U.S. inflation data. Shipbuilder Austel shares dipped lower after ASIC launched legal action concerning the company's market disclosures with respect to Austel's literal combat ship program before July 2016. Industrial player Borrell also traded in the red after defining its reasons for rejecting Seven's bid. Meanwhile, shares in Woolworths jumped up after the ACCC approved its purchase of a large stake in PFD food shares. Notably, Wall Street closed lower, reverting from the gains made during the early session as market participants became cautious ahead of key inflation data to look for cues as to when the country's central bank might tighten its dovish monetary policy. The U.S. consumer price data is said to be released on Thursday, which could report a spike of 4.7 percent in the overall annual inflation rate. On Wall Street, the S&P 500 fell just one point short of its all-time high in May as technology giants surged along with healthcare stocks. Some of U.S. President Joe Biden's economic stimulus efforts appeared robust, boosting the demand for technology shares as inflation pressures ease. The Dow Jones fell 0.44 percent and the S&P 500 lost 0.18 percent. The Nasdaq Composite also closed in the red, falling 0.09 percent. Inflation worries. Besides the inflation worries, the U.S. economy's skewed demand and supply balance are apparently forcing the markets to pull back. The stress was palpable in most stock segments. Worries remain that the Fed may start discussing tapering asset purchases at next week's U.S. Federal Open Market Committee meeting. More so after U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen's comment that higher U.S. interest rates would be good for the economy. Meanwhile, the 10-year U.S. Treasury bond yield softened due to the unwinding of the short positions for a second day on Treasury notes. Prior to the release of inflation data, the yield on the benchmark 10-year U.S. Treasury notes fell 3.7 basis points to 1.49 percent. That's compared to 1.53 percent on Tuesday. Notably, the yields fell below 1.5 percent for the first time since the 7th of May 2021. Let us now move on to a currency update. Inflation data from China revealed its producer price index surged 9% over the last year, the highest in the last 12 years. That's on the back of surging commodity prices. However, the surge in consumer prices was lower than expected, helping to mitigate concerns. The Chinese yuan, which rallied to a three-year high last week, ticked up slightly on Wednesday. The US dollar was a little changed and bounced off sessions low as market participants focused on the upcoming US Consumer Price Index report to help gauge the current pace of the economic recovery. Meanwhile, the Australian New Zealand dollars had a range-bound trading session on Wednesday. Now, before we get to the next news, it's time for a very short break. Stay with us. New Zealand is unique, and Kalkine TV is here to bring you all the latest news and trending market updates. Streaming across multiple platforms, so no matter where you are, whether it be at the beach or on the farm, you can count on the team here at Kalkine TV to be your home for accessing the latest valuable insights into global issues that are affecting New Zealanders. Subscribe to our channels across YouTube, Facebook, also visit kalkine.co.nz. Hello and welcome back. This is Rachel live from Calkine Studios and you're watching The Opening Bell. Moving on now, let us take a glimpse at the crypto space. After falling to almost 31,000 US dollars on Tuesday, Bitcoin surged sharply by 8.6% on Wednesday, rising back to above the 36,000 US dollar mark. 
Its peers, Dogecoin and Ethereum, also rose in a major boost for the cryptocurrency market. El Salvador has officially adopted Bitcoin as legal tender after Congress gave nod to President Nayib Bukele's proposal to embrace the digital coin. With this, the Central American nation becomes the first country in the world to officially adopt Bitcoin as legal currency. In yet another cryptocurrency meltdown, Bitcoin prices tanked a day before as officials in the U.S. were able to recover most of the ransom paid to hackers that targeted Colonial Pipeline. That was the largest pipeline system for refined oil products in the country. The fortunes of digital currencies have turned around for the worst in just a month. Speculations are rife that what seemed to be a banner year for cryptocurrencies back in April turned out to be a bubble in May. After touching a historic high of over 64,000 US dollars in 2021, Bitcoin collapsed by around 50% in the next month and is now trading around 30,000 US dollars. However, notably, despite the crash, Bitcoin has not wiped off all the year-to-date gains it made till April 2021. The recovery of the Bitcoin ransom seems to have undermined its libertarian and free of government control case, raising alarms that Bitcoin is not as untouchable and secure as first advocated. The recent pullback was widely anticipated after a power-packed rally seen early this year, given Bitcoin's history of bouts of deep drawdowns after such rallies. Having said that, the ongoing volatility in the crypto market seems to have given a lesson to investors to only invest the money they can afford to lose without ending up in financial trouble. Overall, cryptocurrencies have been weighed down heavily by the regulatory clampdown in China, and not to mention the tweets from Tesla CEO Elon Musk. Moving on to our next segment now, let us zoom our lens on the Australian share market for the day. Let us first look at the energy sector. Australian energy players such as Woodside Petroleum, AGL Energy, Beach Resources and Origin Energy are trading in the red currently amid broader oil price dynamics. Crude oil prices closed almost unchanged on Wednesday after US inventory data revealed a surge in gasoline inventories due to weak fuel demand. Notably, the oil prices have been on a steady incline since the beginning of 2021 on the back of a post-COVID recovery in global demand and supply cuts by key oil producing countries. Last week, oil prices hit a two-year high when OPEC and its members agreed to ease curbs on oil production in the wake of diminishing supply glut and improving demand. Going forward, a lot on the demand side depends on the subsequent virus waves and the success of the global vaccination campaigns. Now, before we get to the next news, it's time for a very short break. Stay tuned. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, Continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Hello and a very warm welcome back to you. This is Rachel live from Kalkine Studios and you're watching The Opening Bell. Let us move on to the miners space now. Heavyweight miners, BHP, Rio Tinto and the Fortescue Metals Group are trading in the red amid a commodity price dip witnessed over the last few days. On Wednesday, iron ore futures ticked up after a three-day fall as worries over supply boosted prices of the steel-making raw material. The most active September iron ore futures contract on China's Dalian Commodity Exchange closed 4% up at 1,175 yuan per tonne. 
In the yellow metal space, Australian gold miners such as DeGray Mining, Evolution Mining, Romelius Resources and Northern Star Resources are trading in the green so far today. On Wednesday, gold remained in consolidation for most of the session as investors look forward to U.S. inflation data that could shape the course of the Fed's monetary policy. Meanwhile, Australian tech space is under the spotlight today after giants such as Google, Amazon and Alphabet all closed in the green in the weak U.S. session. Tech shares such as Afterpay Zero, Ystate Global and Ultium traded higher during early market hours. Moving on now, let us look at some newsmakers in the Australian share market for today. In a major update, civil penalty proceedings have been started by ASIC against the shipbuilder Austel and its former CEO David Singleton in the Federal Court of Australia. The proceedings allege that Austel was aware as early as the 4th of June 2016 of the need to make a material right back of work in progress attributable to its literal combat ship program. Austel made its announcement notifying of the right back on the 4th of July 2016. The proceedings in relation to Mr. Singleton allege that he was involved in the company's contravention of its continuous disclosure obligations and failed to discharge his duty to exercise due care and diligence in relation to matters concerning the disclosure of the earnings right back. Moving on, plants and flowers wholesaler, the Lynch Group has increased its guidance for financial year 2021 on the back of strong demand across Australia and also China. Meanwhile, Australia's largest building and construction materials supplier, Borrell, has stated that its board continues to urge its shareholders to reject Seven Group's takeover offer. Sports wagering operator and iGaming provider PointsBet Holdings says it has signed an agreement with the Riverboat on the Potomac to provide online and retail sports wagering in Maryland in the United States. Moving on now, interactive healthcare technologies provider OneView Healthcare has signed a five-year contract extension with Epworth Healthcare, the largest private health service in Victoria. And gold player Newcrest Mining reports that Red Chris Drilling in British Columbia in Canada continues to expand the higher grade mineralization intersected at East Ridge and in the main zone of the project. Red Chris is operated by Newcrest under a joint venture agreement with Imperial Metals Corporation. Well, that's all for now. We'll be bringing you more stock updates in our upcoming shows. Stay tuned for more live updates on Calkine TV across the economy, markets and sectors. I'm Rachel, signing off for now.